My name is Julian Burke. I'm kind of in the gaming business and coin machines and such and video games, arcade, but I've evolved from electronics from all my life. From when I was eight years old, I used to go around door to door begging for old radios. And once in a while, somebody would give me an old radio. So I would take it apart and I'd learn how to, you know, put the tubes back in it. And ultimately, sometime when I was nine or ten, I started learning how to fix them. So it's kind of, you know, electronics is my life, and I've always been interested in early microphones. And I've been collecting microphones now for over 40 years. I just kind of picked up bits and pieces. But as you pick up a little microphone here and there, and then pretty soon you have, you know, 15, 20 of them, then you start redisplaying them. Well, I have to do this with it, I have to do that with it, and I want to put it somewhere where people can see it. And then one day you wake up, and then Boom, this is what I've got. And then I'm labeled as a super collector. I'm always looking for odd and unusual, <clears throat> excuse me, odd and unusual microphones. Um, there are some that I, I'm not aware of, have never known of their existence, but I'm always learning something every time I go on a trip to a radio meet or a radio show. And many times I find something that I never knew before existed. And then I said, that's what I want in my collection. And the next step is, is uh, how much is it going to cost me? And it's just it's kind of fun there. And then it becomes a passion. In starting out with the history of microphones, let's start out with the first one that started it all. This is an exact replica. In fact, there's a little plaque on it from the Bell Telephone Laboratories that they went to the Smithsonian Institution and they pulled out Alexander Graham Bell's microphone or transmitter as he called it and they wanted to make an exact replica of it and they just made a handful of them. And I'm lucky to have this one here. But this is the first microphone that was not only invented but what he used in his telephone systems. And what made it unusual as the media for modulating the current in it, there's a little brass cup down here, and that cup originally held sulfuric acid in it. That all microphones have one thing in common, that they have a diaphragm. It has like a sheepskin diaphragm on it with a little wire that goes down in this little cup. And when you talk into the top of the microphone, or transmitter as it is, it will modulate the current going through that sulfuric acid. In a sense, it was kind of a battery-like effect, like in your car battery. Now, the most famous thing that Alexander Graham Bell ever did was he actually, what he did, he spilled one of these things, some sulfuric acid on himself, and that's when he said, Watson, come here, I need you. And, that, and, they, and the microphone was actually working. And uh, Tom uh, uh, Watson back there, he heard Alexander Graham Bell say that, and he came running up there to see what was wrong. And this is what started it all, is the first microphone that was ever invented. This is probably one of the most iconic, you know, microphones that they ever made when they're starting out. This is an RCA 4A microphone. It came along the scene of about 1925, 1926, and it's a condenser type box microphone. Now what makes this one significant was that this was the new RCA type of a broadcast microphone. This was a uh, professional microphone. Now this has a little stand on it that it sits on your desk and this was called an announce stand that this could be used as a desk mic. But the castings in this there's places to mount other hardware to it that this microphone could be hung from a boom it would stand on a floor stand that would uh, stand uh, almost as tall as I am. And if you look at any old radio uh, personalities, you'll find Groucho Marx and a few, many others, talking into one of these things. They made uh, quite a few of these microphones, and they liked to decorate them with their logo, NBC. They could have the call letters of the station. And many times, that when they had the RCA had their red and their blue network when they were broadcasting you had a lot of traveling artists and performers that when they would come to a station of uh, you know they didn't stay in one place at one uh, any one time that you know where am I what am I doing you know what station is this 
and then they, all I had to do was look at the mic flag and say, this is NBC, or it could say CBS, or Red. this is the Red Radio Network. But this particular one, like I said, there's probably, there's not many of these known to exist, perhaps 20, maybe 25, and perhaps more will turn up on the scene, which is happening today. But anyway, this is a very historically significant microphone. Inside this, besides the condenser microphone, in the back of it, there's three vacuum tubes in it. And the reason they did this was for noise uh, purposes that if they put the amplifier inside the microphone itself, it would tend to lower the noise that the microphone would make, that it would amplify and send a stronger signal out to the uh, broadcast console. But this is an iconic microphone that was used pretty much everywhere from the late 30s up through the 60s. Western Electric made these things, and they were also gave the patents to LTech Lansing. LTech Lansing and Western Electric were manufacturing the same microphone. They shared their technology. But anyway, this could be hung from a boom as a desk mount. But if you look at some of the old Eisenhower pictures and pre-1955, you'll see a lot of these in use. And they made thousands of these things. And they were very popular and very economic for broadcast use. Also in the late 30s, here's something I know you've all been waiting for. This is the iconic 44BX RCA microphone. This is probably one of the most iconic, the most picturesque microphones that they ever manufactured. Everybody looks for a 44BX for their collection. They made many of these things. It was a very well designed microphone. Its only drawback was the fact that it's heavy and big. It could be hung from a boom. It could be on a desk stand or a floor stand. And one of the characteristics of this ribbon microphone is that it has a very low resonant frequency that all of the broadcasters and all of the guys that like to have deep voices, they wanted a 44BX because when you talked into this microphone, you could change your voice to some degree <clears throat> that almost made you sound like God. And very well-built, sturdy, great microphone great features to it and any old radio show you'll always see a 44 bx and this was made in many different versions that started out as a 48 i mean a 44 a then they had a 44 b that they it's a 44 bx and this was the last version that they ever made it before they discontinued production of it in the early 50s and these were available i'd say up until about 1961 as existing stock very sought after and somewhat valuable today. And very common, but they're just everybody wants one. What you're looking at is what I call my Hitler microphone. It was built by Telefunken or Neumann in the same factory over there. But Hitler wanted 50 of these to be built that he could use them in various locations. This is commonly called a bottle mic. It's not a unique design. Most of your condenser mics had an amplifier built in the tube that you see below it there. And it's powered, as all condenser microphones are, with a phantom power supply. They have to have a power supply to make them work. Well, inside that tube is a vacuum tube inside there. It's an amplifier. And on that vacuum tube, it's got the Luftwaffe symbol on it. You know, it has the eagle there that the Germans in the Third Reich used. And it's a Nazi-built microphone. Many times you see Adolf Hitler up there when he's giving one of his speeches up there, you will see that microphone. I'm not sure the model number on it, if it indeed has one. I've never really seen one on it. I'm sure it does. But only 50 of those were ever built. This one came from the Netherlands, and it was one of the 50 that he had manufactured for him. The word microphone was invented by a man by the name of Wheatstone. No one knew what a microphone was at that time. That was about 1827. And until Alexander Graham Bell invented the first microphone in 1876, they called them transmitters. But since that time, and for the past almost 140 years, microphones have been a part of everybody's daily life.
especially starting in the 1920s when broadcasting was beginning. But before that, it was just telephones only, and they were trying to get away from the Morse code, from the da da did did that they were transmitting. They wanted something that you could transmit speech much faster. But in microphones, over the last 140 years, I doubt if there's one person on this earth that has never come in contact with a microphone of some description because everybody carries a cell phone with them today. We've watched microphones on television for the last 60 years, 70 years, and microphones are very significant and that everybody can relate to them in one way or the other through the old-fashioned ones to the ones that we use today. There's nothing like a microphone and as far as I know, there is nothing that will ever replace them. My name is Julian Burke. I'm a microphone collector, and I hope you enjoyed what I had to show.